Got to love when companies give you good marketing material, right? It makes our job a little easier. For sure. So the big question right off the bat. A few weeks ago, Google quite quietly released something called Notebook LM, which is based on the Gemini language model. And it's basically an AI research tool with a bit of a twist. I've been playing with it for the last couple of days and I thought I'd share some of my findings and how potentially it could be useful for your workflow. So let's get on with it. So let's dig into this tool and take a look at what it can do. And I'll show you a couple of use cases that I'm using it for right now. Now it is in experimental mode. That means they're going to be adding features all the time. And currently, great news, it's actually free. So you don't have to pay anything for the features right now. So this is what it looks like when you go to notebooklm.google. Let's click on Try Notebook LM. You just need a Google account to get yourself sorted. And you're presented basically with a couple of options here. You've got some example notebooks down at the bottom that we can look at a little bit later that show you some of the things that it can do from a use case perspective. But the great thing about it is that you can use it in many different ways. Let's create our first notebook and I'll give you a couple of examples. The idea behind Notebook LM is that you can add multiple sources to a notebook. And what I mean by that is that these sources can be PDFs, they can be documents, they can be eBooks, they can be something from Google Drive. They've recently introduced YouTube videos and you can just copy and paste text. And what that means is you can add multiple sources to one notebook and then ask pointed questions using the AI freeform text tool to go and ask similar things that you would do with ChatGPT. But what you're asking it is all based on the research and the source material that you've added to the notebook. So I'm going to use this as a use case for doing some research for a new product that I'm going to be reviewing. It's not actually a new product, I've already done the review, but I just wanted to get a couple of sources from the internet, combine those into a notebook, and then start asking some questions about it. So let's first add a couple of sources. You can do a couple of things. You can drag, as I said, different files into this area here, or you can add a Google Doc, Google Slides, a website link, or a YouTube link. I've got two YouTube links and a website link that I'm going to add. So let's first click on the YouTube and I'll just copy and paste a couple of these in. We'll speed this up. And as you can see, once we've added one source, it appears here. I'm just gonna add another one here by clicking on uh, the sources. I'm just gonna do another YouTube video. And then I'll add one more source here, which is the actual website. And what I'm doing here is reviewing or getting some details to review the Elgato Neo microphone. So I'm just gonna paste a URL in here. So once we've got all these sources listed on the left-hand side, if you click on any one of these, you can see, well, this is my video specifically. It's going to summarize the video for you and it'll show you some of the key topics. And these are things that you can ask questions on in a minute. It's also got the embedded YouTube player here, so you can actually see and reference what it's playing. And then this is the full transcript of the video down at the bottom. So again, it's another quick and easy way of grabbing transcripts. I know that these are available with ChatGPT and others, but it's a really convenient way of having that in one single place. If you go to the website, for example, which is Elgato's website, it'll show you again a summary of the information and it'll basically break down everything that's in the website, which is cool and gives you all the information you need for there. But where the power of this tool comes in is when you can start asking questions and summarize information around the research that you've added in these sources. So you've got here on the right hand side a number of suggested questions. What's the main message of the video? Great tech made easy. How does it showcase the benefits of using blah blah blah? What's the target audience for the video and why? So let's just click on that one and see what it comes up with. So as you can see it's come back with a number of different points to that question around what the target audience is for this particular microphone. You'll see here that it's got a one and a two, and these are the points in either the video or the text that we grabbed before, the website in this example, of where it's picking up that information from. So it's giving you sort of citation information based on 
where the research has been pulled from. So this is super useful for consolidating and bringing all this research together. So you can click on any one of these and you can bring it up and it'll show you where the source of that information has come from with regards to the details it's provided here. And you can also ask a question. So um, is the quality of this mic good? And let's ask it that question and see what it comes up with. You can see that it has come back with some points from the two YouTube videos and the website around sound quality. It says the source has provided nuanced perspective from the Wave microphone. It says, blah, 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 recent review, decided the sound quality is quite good. And if I click on that, it'll show the, the part in my video where I mentioned that the quality of the microphone is, is quite good. Now, what is for me the killer feature of this is if we go back to notebook guide, you can now create a FAQ or a study guide, a table of contents, a timeline or a briefing document all about this. So for example, if people don't want to go through the video and find out the key points, you could just click on FAQ and it's going to create a factual based set of requirements all from the source material that you've uploaded. So you can create yourself an FAQ here based on all this data. So what is the Wave Neo, for example? How does the Wave Neo compare to built-in laptop microphones? What makes it? And this is great because now I can copy this and I can create a PDF and include it, for example, in the video that I've created to give people a quick summary of what the video was all about and whether I think this is a good microphone or not. If we go back to notebook guide down here at the bottom, one of the most powerful features I think of this new tool right now is the audio overview. Now this will create a podcast style overview of whatever source material you've given it. So it's going to give you almost like a third party review of the material that you've put in to the sources. And what I find astonishing is that it is a very well-balanced podcast style discussion between two AI voices based on the material you've given it. So let's hit generate and then we'll play a little bit of what it comes back with. All right, so to generate that audio took around three minutes and it all depends on the number of source material that you give it. As I said at the beginning of this video, you can have up to 50 pieces of source information in a single notebook. So let's go back and take a listen on what it's come up with. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. It's given a six minute overview, but let's just have a listen to a little bit of it. All right. So you're curious about the Elgato Wave Neo microphone. Seems to be quite the buzz around this one. Definitely is. So we decided to do a deep dive, check out, you know, wow. what's out there. We've got a hands-on YouTube review we're looking at, plus some stuff from Elgato themselves. Gotta love when companies give you good marketing material, right? It makes our job a little easier. For sure. So the big question right off the bat, is the Wave Neo worth your hard-earned cash? Yeah, and what I find interesting is this reviewer, he focuses on the raw audio. Oh, you mean like no fancy editing to make it sound better than it is? Exactly. Straight from the mic, which I appreciate, gives you a true sense of... Wow. Isn't that amazing that it's given you a really nice, friendly, third party sort of summary in audible format of the, all the research that you've just put in there and the questions that you've asked? I have to say I'm quite blown away with the level of detail and nuance of this audio file. You could actually create yourself, if you wanted to, an AI podcast based on any material that you give it. And for example, if you're somebody that doesn't like the sound of your own voice or is just can't be bothered to record or don't have the recording equipment available, if you want to do some research on specific papers and things and want to create podcasts based on that, then you've got a ready-made podcast here. It's not perfect, of course. It's AI and it's just starting off. Wow. That's amazing. Let's listen to a little bit more and then I'll show you a couple of other use cases. What's of what this thing can do? Kind of like a baseline, then we can talk about all the software magic later. Precisely. Now, another thing that caught my eye, the Wave Neo is part of Elgato's more, shall we say, budget-friendly lineup. Okay, so that makes the raw audio thing even more interesting, doesn't it? Right. 
Elgato is known for quality, so I'm really curious how this more affordable option stacks up. Well, what can I say? I mean, it is really, really impressive, in my opinion, on how this thing can sort of articulate and get the points across in a nice and friendly manner. Now, there's a couple of things you can do once you've got the audio version of this particular notebook. You can actually change the speed, of course, you can speed it up and you can download or delete it. Currently, what isn't available is to extract the transcript from this audio file, because if you could get that, then you could do other things with it. But you could just pop this audio file into another third party tool. ChatGPT could do it for you. You could even put it in Descript. Descript will actually recognize that there are two voices and split that up accordingly. So there's a ton of things that you can actually do with this that I find incredibly useful. And it's gonna be a tool that I'm using more and more for basic research and things like that. One of the other use cases is taking complex white papers, documentation, or research papers and popping them into this research tool and having the audio overview speak that to you in a clear and digestible way. So it's a great way of consuming that information without having to go through all of it yourself. And it'll summarize it for you very well and you can also then have it speak to you. What you can do as well is obviously ask questions based on that. Now what you can't do is influence and change the audio overview piece at this moment in time. What would be good is if you could ask it questions and then have it speak those back to you in a sort of a conversation type way, similar to what sort of chat GPT does when you're having a conversation with it. But again, this is really early doors in terms of this technology. And right now I'm blown away with the ability and what are the things that it can do. Let's use Notebook LM now to break down a complicated technical topic. So I've chosen 32-bit float and I've got a number of websites and a YouTube video that I'm going to bring in as sources into my notebook and then we'll ask it some questions, maybe get an audio summary and just to see what it comes up with. So let's go to the site. You see here I've already got a notebook in place. Now what's interesting is that of all the sources that I've selected, one of them is behind a paywall, which means that Wired is obviously looking to um, get you to pay for this article. So obviously it can't go out and get information based on anything that you have to pay for. But the interesting thing is as well is in the sources, you can basically select all of these sources as reference points for when you're asking questions and doing the summary, or you can pick one in particular. So I guess the best of both worlds is that you can be very choosy in specific papers that you want to ask targeted questions on this one. And if it doesn't know the answer, it'll go out and sort of try and explain that and, and why it can't find the information in that source material. But there is some intelligence associated with that as well. But anyway, let's take a look at all these sources. And we've got a couple of questions down here in a minute. So let's just have a look. Describe the and uh, what I say, the advantages. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's ask it a question. What are the advantages of using 32-bit float? So this is gonna pick up this information from all of the sources. I'm interested to see sort of what it comes back with. And you can see here that it's using a number of the references that I've added here. So for example, one answer to it is it avoids clipping during recording because 32-bit float allows for such a wide dynamic range. Audio captured with this technology is essential, impossible to clip even at extreme volumes. And you can see here, if I click on like uh, number three, this reference is from the uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, 32-bit float, anything that you need to know. So this is one of the sources. Source number four is basically from the Zoom source guide. So the manufacturer Zoom here, you can see how 32-bit float works there. And then if I click on number one, it's going to find it from Tascam. So these are some of the uh, advantages of 32-bit float. You can do an FAQ based on that as well. And I think FAQs are really great at, for summarizing these complicated topics. Uh, whilst it's doing that, I'll just ask another one. Um, disadvantages of 32-bit float. Let's do that. 
So it's going to go and tell me what the disadvantages are of using 32-bit float. I actually can't think of any, but there you go. 50% um, larger than 24-bit files. For example, one minute of audio at standard rate, blah, blah, blah. So here is all the disadvantages. And this is actually in a foreign language. Interesting that it's been able to pick that up. Um, and let's have a look at this one here. So some other disadvantages of using 32-bit float. So again, a really good way of using the research, but obviously the power of this comes in with these FAQs and things. So let's just grab this FAQ. And um, I've noticed that you can't ask questions whilst it's doing something else as well, because it's going to overwrite what you're doing. So um, is it good at multitasking? I don't know, maybe it's just the interface, but we'll see. So here's the FAQ. What is the 2-bit float recording, blah, blah, blah. So it's a very nice summary of that. We've kept that here. And then let's go back to the notebook guide and let's do the deep dive overview from an audio perspective and see what it comes back with. Once it's finished, we'll come back. All right, so the audio version has done its thing. It's finished. Let's take a look at it. And more importantly, let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So this is the summary of 32-bit float. It's eight minutes. Let's have a quick listen. Ever like have that thing happen where you're recording something and then like, bam, something super loud happens and your audio just goes like totally wonky or like you're trying to get this super quiet sound and it just gets buried and hiss. Oh, the worst. Yeah. Well, so get this. Today, we're going to like dive into this whole technology thing that basically says sayonara to all that frustration. It's called 32 bit float audio. It's one of those things where you hear about and you're like, wait, hold up. Why didn't someone like mention this ages ago? <laughs> Like, seriously. I know, right? So you sent over some seriously cool stuff about this whole 32-bit float thing, a Tascam article, something from Ask.audio, even a YouTube video from Rayday about their wireless PRO system. Oh, yeah. And it's not just like marketing hype or whatever. Mm. Like how they said the word Rayday, which was road, and that's the YouTube video used. You know, it's not 100% perfect. Rayday. Mm. Sounds very interesting and flavorsome. Anyway... You get the idea, breaking down these complicated and complex topics in a friendly, nice way. And I thought it'd be interesting to see that it's used all the research sources that I've put into this particular notebook and given you that summary for it. Amazing stuff, quite fun. Be really interested to know what you are gonna use this tool for. I'm still playing with it, it's still in its infancy, of course, but some of the use cases I can see already are things like simplifying complex topics. We've seen how it can take something like 32-bit float, make a nice audio version of that. You can ask questions around it, have multiple research documents in your source files, and therefore you're getting different perspectives and different views from these different papers. For product research, and brainstorming, if you're doing product reviews like I do sometimes, then it's great to pull in all that information from maybe different YouTubers who may have a different perspective on that, see what they may be missing in terms of some of the features and so on. And it gives you lots of ideas to maybe create your own video based on the product that you want to review. Again, it's a great brainstorming tool. Another thing is, you know, if you just want an audio summary of the news or different papers and things like that in the morning, you can use it for news and educational research paper summaries. If you want to listen to something instead of reading it, then pop it in here and it will play it back to you in a nice, friendly podcast way. And finally, you know, creating audio podcasts and summaries for repurposing. The audio podcast feature of this is truly amazing. This back and forth, little bit of banter that these AI voices have. It does sound very natural and very real. And I'm sure it's only going to get better, maybe with the things of including different types of voices. Maybe you've got the option to add your own voice, which would be super cool and something that you could do. And therefore you could generate your own podcast without having worrying too much about recording and things like that. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you think this is useful, what are you gonna be using it for? It's just the first phase of these new tools that are coming out, but something great, something I thought I'd share with you and I'm finding it really fun and interesting to use. Speak to you soon, see you in the next video.